A quick performance brief today on travel and its implications on performance. If we plan ahead and we think smart, a lot of times our travel, especially domestically, meaning within the United States, is really not gonna be that bad, especially if we have a little bit of time on the back end to adjust at our new location. So in this case, at a bowl site, typically we're gonna spend about a week at the location. So we're gonna be really in a really good position uh, come game day. So let's think about how travel impacts performance. When we think about the logistics of the trip, we're gonna be traveling from central Pennsylvania all the way to the Pacific uh, coast in Los Angeles. What that does is we're traveling across multiple time zones, essentially adding three hours to our day. Okay, so if we take off in central Pennsylvania, okay, and then fly, and let's say our internal clock has us at 6 p.m. Okay, let's say I land at 6 p.m. and my body feels like it's 6 p.m. And if I haven't even changed my watches, maybe it's still East Coast time at 6. Essentially, on the West Coast, it's 3 p.m. So I'm going backwards slightly and adding three hours to my day. Now that doesn't really hurt us too much in this case domestically because as, as human beings, we typically have the ability to adjust staying up longer at night as opposed to speeding up. So on the flip side, if I was traveling east, maybe to Europe, somewhere over here, I would have to speed up my internal clock and go to bed when I was really thinking internally that it was a little bit earlier. So in that case, we should be feeling really, really good. So in, on the travel logistics, when we travel to LA, we're gonna be essentially adding three hours to our day. Not a problem, okay? When I do change time zones rapidly, so when I'm in the air and I change time zones, so in this case, East, Eastern Standard Time, to Pacific Standard Time, I'm essentially uh, throwing my body off in what it truly thinks the time is. Okay, so our circadian rhythm, which we've talked about a lot with this in terms of sleep, our circadian rhythm is essentially our internal clock that, that operates roughly about 24 hours. In fact, slightly longer than 24 hours. But natural cues in the environment, it could be social interactions, exercise, meals, sunlight, really helps us keep our lock, our circadian lock at 24 hours. So when we feel like it's six o'clock tomorrow, it's gonna feel the same way. That is circadian rhythm. And there's a lot of processes in my body from a lot of physiological mechanisms to metabolism to the core body temperature on how it rises and cools in the evening. All of this is maintained and set by our circadian rhythm. So when I change time zones really rapidly, Initially, I'm gonna feel kind of out of whack because I essentially am still stuck on wherever time zone I initially came from, okay? So a couple things that we could experience when we rapidly change time zone. One is travel fatigue and two is jet lag, okay? Travel fatigue is essentially something that you could get anytime you're traveling. You could be in the same time zone. You could be driving for an extended period of time. You could be flying, again, domestically, on and off the plane. It's just the fatigue that could accumulate from just sitting down, going through security, uh, driving, things like headaches, a little bit of lethargy, lethargy, or just feeling fatigue. That's oftentimes combated by just walking around, getting a little sunlight, moving around, getting the blood flow. That can quickly uh, dis dissipate. Now, something that's a little bit more complex is the idea of jet lag. Jet lag is essentially a sleep disorder because when we think about changing time zones really rapidly, I'm having to either, like I mentioned before, speed up my clock or extend my day. That can have a little bit more pronounced uh, impact on how I'm operating in my system. Most of the time, when we're traveling domestically, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna have that much of a problem adjusting. However, if we have a plan, once we get there, we can be in a really good place. So we will send out, uh, before we leave, a couple tips, just like we always do on our travel, with some things that we can do. We're gonna start with, even before the trip starts, okay, in the planning phase. Uh, you know, we're still here in State College. We're gonna have some days leading up to the time that we depart. What we can do is, one, Make sure we relax. We don't need to be run, rushing around. We don't need to be packing at the last minute. We need to have a plan, lay everything out, know what's going on. That's one, just be calm, handle your business.
been on the days leading up to our trip out west. We know we're gonna be adding three hours to our day. So what we could potentially do, if I have a consistent bedtime, I could slowly start adding about 30 minutes to each day, okay? So if I start four days out from our uh, departure date and I add 30 minutes each day and stay up later 30 minutes each day, I'm essentially gonna be two hours after four days and then when we adjust, we're only really having to stay up an extra hour. So that may be a strategy, something that we can talk about on an individual level if you're interested in something like that. But we are starting before we even leave, adjusting to our night, new time zone, okay? The next one I had already mentioned, packing. The worst thing that we wanna do is stress. Travel in itself is stress. Physical activity is stress exams, everything that we encounter can be considered a stressor. If we can manage things by planning ahead, there's no reason to add stress. So make sure we plan ahead and pack. When we're going for an extended period of time too, and I'm packing, I wanna think about packing potentially some luxury items, things that can help me with my pre-bed ritual. If it's a book, if it's a specific alarm clock, if it's a pillow, that we absolutely have to have to make sure we get a good night's sleep, pack that along with you and make sure you're, it's in your bag. Now, when we're on the trip, when we depart and we're flying down, much like some of our extended bus trips that we've had or longer plane trips, even within the East, Eastern Standard Time or in the Central Standard Time, the biggest thing is make sure we're hydrated. Oftentimes, airplanes are very dry, okay? The cabin is pressurized and the air that's circulating is extremely dry. So it's gonna naturally dehydrate us. So if we can make sure that we carry a, a water bottle at all times, like we always do here in the facility, and before we even board that plane, we are very hydrated. Think about the color of our urine. urine. Make sure that we're really hydrated. That can really help us there. The second thing, I had mentioned the cabin pressure in the airplane. We're gonna be on it for an extended period of time, longer than some of our flights during the regular season. So if you wear contact lenses, just take your contact lenses, make sure you pack them, and wear your glasses. That's gonna allow your eyes uh, to be a little bit more comfortable and it's gonna help against uh, some of that travel fatigue. The next one would be move around. In some of our longer bus trips, we've talked about increasing blood flow, especially in the extremities, our legs and our arms, even our neck and low back. Things that we've done in the past, there's been some videos which we'll link to this one where we can have just really simple seated movements from ankle pumps to knee um, extension and flexions to just neck rotations and, and things like that, super simple. Another thing that we can do is actively get up out of our seat, make sure we tell everybody, excuse me, be very polite, and then walk the aisle, walk down and then walk back. That can help circulate blood and it can help me from being very stiff when I get get there. The next area is upon arrival. There's going to be a lot of things going on. We got to get our luggage. We got to get some food, things like that. But as soon as we get all the things buttoned down, we want to orient ourselves with the hotel. Oftentimes on a big extended trip, we're staying in a resort. Okay. So we want to orient ourselves and know where the meal rooms are. Where are my meeting rooms? Where's the team meeting room that I'm going to have to be at here? Maybe that evening or the next morning really early. I don't want to be rushing around. I want to know exactly what's going on. Another thing when I'm walking around the resort, the hotel, that's also allowing me to move around a little bit. It's getting more blood flow. It's getting some of the stiffness out. So when I get to the hotel, make sure that um, I'm, I'm adjusting and I know what's going on. If I use devices that adjust to the new time already, that's a really good time to make sure everything's set. If you don't, if you just use a regular watch, make sure that's set to the new time zone as well. Now, finally, whenever we reach game week, the biggest thing we wanna think about is let's make sure our game week is as similar to here in State College as we can. It could be a simple wake up ritual, a bedtime ritual, some schedule um, thing that I always do. Let's make sure we keep that as similar as possible. Um, the, the bowl trips, the extended stays, sometimes there's events. Make sure I experience things early in the week as well so that I don't have to rush around trying to see different things that I want to later in the week. I can be focusing on kickoff. And then finally, we talk about this every single week. The main thing is thinking 1-0. 
There's one reason we're going on this bull trip, and it's to be 1-0. Think and travel. Think and performance always. There's things always that we can do to find a 1% improvement in everything that we do. This is your couple tips for us today.